Oh, somebody's here. Yeah, it looks like it's the Lock Boys. Oh, and the New Salt guys. The Rocket guys from Lock Precision and the team from New Salt Laser arrived to help us conduct the biggest experiment ever performed on Skinwalker Ranch. We're combining two really spectacular experiments in one this time. Bigger and better on the rockets and more lasers. Yeah. And I expect we're going to learn a lot from it. We uh, have measured some phenomenology here that's uh, actually affecting laser beams as it, they propagate through the sky. We're actually seeing uh, lasers actually hit us a particular level and then actually bend and turn. And so that means there's something significant, you know, at, at this uh, position. And we're going to uh, launch rockets right through that. We're going to uh, release uh, some uh, powders that'll, you know, create a cloud that falls through this area to give us more uh, visual with the laser beams. So with our time about to run out this year, the plan is to use the biggest rockets and lasers yet to conduct a new experiment that will not only stimulate something unmistakable to appear at the triangle, but also reveal what the anomaly at that mile high zone actually is. Go time. Yes, sir. Ready, ready. Tonight's gonna be one of the most complicated, biggest, most extravagant experiments that we've actually done here at Skinwalker Ranch. But we've got three of these giant, multi-hundred watt laser space cannons. We've got the laser scanner. We're gonna be broadcasting a sweep across this 1.6 gigahertz part of the spectrum where we're getting these weird signals here on the ranch. We, we're going to hopefully stimulate the biggest response so far and get a lot of data as this rocket launches. We'll set up three high-powered laser cannons around the triangle and each laser beam will be aimed upward converging at the mile high zone where we've detected all kinds of radiation spikes and obtained evidence of an invisible anomaly that has deflected other lasers and GPS devices in the past. And in addition to the lasers here, we'll deploy another laser back on the helipad that will be scanning up and down and through that region in the sky above the triangle. We'll monitor for any bends in the laser's pattern. If we see any deviations, it could be evidence of anomalies for us to focus on. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and turn the instruments on and, and do our first launch. Bam, there they are. Check it out. Now, see, that is straight above us. Is that not crazy? We've used lasers each summer, and each summer we've got bigger or more or spread them out more. And what we've seen each time we do an experiment like this is UAP in the sky or at least some sort of unknown atmospheric or aerial phenomena. So who knows what's going to happen to us tonight? Three, two, one. Push and hold. There you go. Uh-oh. That motor blew. It exploded. Oh, oh no. Oh. Hot grains. Hot grains. Let's go. There could be a fire. Yep. Oh, my god. What the hell just happened? Let's jump in. Nobody getting run over. Son of a Hang on, Brian. Damn it. That sucks. We were all set to shoot our gigantic main rocket up into the mile high zone above the triangle to identify where this anomaly is but it just blew up in a fireball above the launch pad. The thing is, I don't see a fire. I don't see a fire. No reason for us to get up close. Right. Alive, right? What, the uh, rocket? Doesn't it have another explosion? I don't know, but that sucks. He thinks the igniter was too hot. It blew out all the payload. The whole forward closure, man. Uh, we had a catastrophic rocket failure. We're out here uh, doing disaster analysis right now. Never left the pad. All the charges went off and then blew it up on the pad. Copy that. Oh, boy. The outcome is a shock and a disappointment. It's not what we expected, given all the sophistication in the design of that rocket. Fortunately, we have other rockets that we can launch into the area above the triangle in an effort to continue the experiment. 
We've got about uh, four minutes. We're ready to go. We need to radio uh, Casey and Caleb, let them know our countdown. Yep, yes we do. Casey and Caleb. You guys have all the instruments in place, over. Tom, Caleb. Yeah, 10-4, everything in place and good on our end. Hey, hey, Eric. Yeah, go ahead, Travis. So I'm wondering uh, about air traffic, are we clear? We are clear. Five, yes. four, three, two, one. There, there it goes. goes. Wow. 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 That was fantastic. What was that bend all about? It cocked dramatically to the north so it couldn't go up through the beam. What in the crap? So there better be some upper level winds to explain that out of the north. What winds? It launches straight up and it gets to about 2,000, maybe 3,000 feet and it does something really unusual. It turned almost due north and flew away from the triangle area and away from the anomaly that we know starts somewhere around 2,500 to 3,000 feet above ground level and up to about five to 6,000 feet. It's like it got to that point and turned away from it somehow or other. Did y'all see the smoke trail? There was no wind yeah. in the con There's at all. There's no it wind, just... yet it gets deflected dramatically off to the north. There's no wind. What in the crap? Whoa, 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 hold on. Hey, Travis, you copy? Yeah, Eric, go ahead. If Brandon's nearby, can you bring him in real quick? We'll be right there. What's going on, Eric? Travis, you, you got to see this. OK. Well, there's the lasers. Yeah, I'm doing an instant oh. playback. You see this? Yeah. Wow, what the crap is that? It's moving. It's moving way too fast for it to be a satellite. And this just appeared next to the lasers. Yeah, it looks like it's headed towards the apex. That's crazy. Okay. When did this appear? This was just now. Oh, okay. my gosh. OK, I want to play it back. Just after our rocket got deflected away from the mile-high zone above the triangle, Eric captured one of the most vivid UAPs we've seen during our experiments. And it was maneuvering right above the apex of our laser beams, where we were also broadcasting our 1.6 gigahertz communication signal. So all I could wonder was, did we cause that to appear? And is that what deflected our rocket? Is there, there any way it could be air traffic? I mean, we still have a no-fly zone. No, it's moving so fast. Yeah, there's no strobe. Look right here. This thing's really clipping along. Oh my gosh, hey, it disappeared. Can you replay that? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. What did it disappear into? There's, it's not cloudy. And gone. Look at that. Look at that. That's insane. This is the point at which I just caught a glimpse of this thing. So it, it emerged from, I don't know if it was. That's down below the Mesa. I don't, I don't know if I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing or not. Is it a portal? Are we seeing portals open? Yeah. OK. Oh, wait, back it up. All right, hold back on. it up. And it does look like it's going right to where the laser's pointed. OK, you want me to zoom in? Yeah. It looks like there's some kind of structure in the middle of it. It has edges. Do you see that? Okay. Yeah, but the edges seem to move. Check it out. It looks, it looks sort of uh, amorphous. Yeah, it does appear to be changing shape. Unbelievable. Now, I don't know, but it looks like the UAP we saw tonight might have come from behind or actually from inside the Mesa. And then it just disappeared into the anomaly above the triangle. That's crazy. Is that what messed with our rockets? Did we cause it to appear by broadcasting the 1.6 gigahertz signal? And then, where did it go? Skinwalker Ranch has been a haven for rumors about UAPs actually entering and exiting from the Mesa, portals, and all kinds of other bizarre phenomena for decades, if not centuries. Tonight, we may have finally captured evidence that some of that could be true. All right, make sure to save this right away. What the heck is that? That's insane.
Many past investigators from Robert Bigelow's team as well as members from the indigenous community have all stated that they believe portals to other dimensions exist on Skinwalker Ranch. Now, I'm not ready to make that my belief, but I think it's a valid enough hypothesis that we need to focus our investigation on it. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that some of what we've seen during this exercise ranks among the strangest events that we've witnessed. Or are we dealing with something that is technological and even volitional? We all want to know the answer to this.